Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Samuel Dada and I'm currently a PhD student at the University of Cambridge in the Department of Chemistry. Welcome to the, a, day, a day in the life of a PhD student. Let's go. So it's actually currently 6.30 and I'm going to be heading to the gym now um, and then after gym I'm going to head to work and then after work I'm going to be presenting at the famous Eton College, I can't believe this is happening. Um, yeah, they reached out to me um, sometime last year and yeah, it's finally happening this year. Um, so it's exciting time, I'm quite nervous um, and we have to give like a 10 minute presentation and then we have like a panel talk but they invited us for like supper and drinks beforehand as well so that should be exciting but yeah. Come with me on my day. Let's go. It's absolutely freezing right now. It's like minus four degrees, but I have to get to the gym because it gets me in that good mood um, before I start the day. So it's so important for me to get to the gym. Now at work, um, literally just have a shower. Also, I haven't had breakfast yet, so I'm gonna have like banana and an apple and a little bit of a biscuit to just get me going as well. Yeah. Right now I'm just doing a little bit of a practice and run over um, kind of through my presentation um, <laughs> yeah so actually just more about the presentation I'm gonna be actually going with Adriana I think you've met her in one of my videos so she was in my sustainability and science kind of video um, so we're actually gonna be presenting together um, at Eton so it's gonna be exciting so it's actually quite nice that I'm not gonna be going by myself um, I'm gonna have um, kind of a friend to go with me but yeah, I'm in this amazing um, room in this office, um, so it's like a little pod, um, so no one can actually hear you or see what you're doing. <laughs> well, I mean, they can see what you're doing, but no one can hear you, so it's a, like like a nice um, meeting, kind of like tiny room, um, but yeah, it's lovely. I'll show you how it looks. Yeah, so this is the meeting room. You can see out there is the main offices. You've got the lights, you've got sockets, and then I'm literally on a little bench, then, and then that's a table, but yeah. It looks amazing. So let me just get back to work. So I've actually forgotten one thing to kind of like add to the presentation. Um, I wanted to add like, so during my master's degree, I did work on like sea elegance. So I want to add um, kind of an animation kind of video on how the worms look. I think that would be really cool for the student to see. Um, so yeah, that's one thing I forgot to add in my presentation. I'm slightly worried because it's a 10 minute presentation, but I seem to be going I've been timing myself, but I seem to be going over time. Hopefully that's not too much of a problem. But it's more like a kind of like two minutes or over time, um, which is not ideal. Um, but let's see, let's see how this goes. I think I try to make um, my presentations as interactive as possible. Um, so people don't get bored and people don't get like sleep off, especially like when it comes to like kids. So I think I'm like presenting to like 13 to 18 year olds. Um, so yeah, I don't, I really don't want them to be bored because um, when they are bored, it's very, very, very obvious. Adriana, hey. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much for having me um, at you know, um, Captain College um, to present. Um, this is just going to be taking you through my journey um, through academia, from where it all kind of began and to where I am right now. Um, so my journey actually began in 2007 when I relocated from Nigeria to the UK. 
Um, I went to school in Thomas Small Catholic School, um, which was in Croydon. Um, I was basically kind of an all-round student, but not really great at anything in particular. Um, I got average grades for GCSEs. I was just involved in kind of the whole life of the school in general. Um, I did, well, fast forward to 2012, I did my A-levels. Um, and at this point in time, I didn't really have like a clear career aspiration, but I thought I would love to like, you know, incorporate like some creative elements of studies to science. I love science and I love art. So I thought what better way of mixing them together? I thought maybe becoming an architect or doing something science, science related. So I picked uh, my A-levels in maths, biology, chemistry, psychology, geography. Um, but the most impactful um, part of this um, whole A-levels was actually doing the extended project which I did on the Battle of the Sexes, which was a debate of equal prize money in tennis between men and women. I feel like this is actually a discussion that we still have today in terms of like um, whether women deserve you know, equal um, prize money to men. And I was able to delve into various aspects, um, like you know how the female and male anatomy, into, um, and then also delve into like commercial aspects as well. So that was like the first um, kind of idea in terms of like research and independent research I had to do. And I was, I kind of really enjoyed it. And I thought, okay, is there a way of kind of doing more of this? Um, so fast forward to 2014, um, I started and did my bachelor's degree at Kingston University through a lot of complications, which I'm not going to go into, but if you have any questions for me, we'll delve into that. Um, but I still managed to um, kind of excel at Kingston and ended up in the top 5% of um, my year and also ended up with an award. But during my time at Kingston, I was able to um, delve into various aspects of research. So the first project I had was um, delving into a bioinformatics project, um, which was actually employing your um, gene prediction softwares um, to kind of characterize differences um, in four human genomic um, clones. Um, so my part of this project, it was kind of a um, part of a great bigger project, which was a cancer-based research project. Um, but my part of the project was actually <coughs> the step four, uh, which was actually just basically looking at the differences in the sequences. So when you get, you know, samples from patients, we um, extracted their DNA, um, which was done by postdocs and PhD students in the lab, and they basically sequenced the DNA, and all I had to do was kind of, you know, look at the differences um, between the genes and stuff um, to see whether we can use this as a way of maybe designing um, specific drugs um, for the patients. Um, this was an exciting part of the project for me because I thought, oh, wow, I'm involved in something quite good and important. And then I did my dissertation um, in Kingston, um, looking at something kind of different. So this was an Alzheimer's-based um, research, which was looking into the inhibitory um, effects of um, polyphenols extracted from herbs or natural substances on the activity of acetylcholine esterase. As maybe many of you might know or might not know, acetylcholine esterase is an enzyme um, that ba basically breaks down the neurotransmitter um, known as acet acetylcholine um, into choline. Um, so, um, the neurotransmitter gets passed in from one neuron to another, and what happens is that acetylcholine breaks this down, which means that um, the neuron um, neurotransmitter doesn't get passed on to the other neuron, which means that the cell or the neuron dies eventually, which is actually implicated in um, Alzheimer's um, research. Um, this was an amazing um, research for me because that was my first time um, delving into you know wet lab experiences, and I was able to gain so many so many new skills like protein purification working with rat brain, which was exciting, and doing some enzymatic assays and also drug inhibition. Um, and then I went on to do my master's at UCL. Um, and this was my first time actually feeling like I had ownership of a project, um, which was didn't actually involve anyone else, but just me and myself. And um, it was a great project and I managed to get um, the MRES Research Project Awards. I started to think I was actually good at this. Um, and my project was actually delving into the role of um, microbial vitamin B6 um, on host physiology. Um, so this was more of a fundamental project rather than a disease-based project. And I was actually working with this nematode worms known as C. elegans. I don't know if many of you know about them. So they are quite microscopic and we've been able to map the DNA and the neurons of um, these um, amazing worms. And we can also kind of like look at how they kind of relate to humans. So what I was able to do was basically knock out. Um, so these worms basically feed on bacteria. And 
one thing that we know also is that we in our gut we all have like millions and trillions of bacteria and what we're able to do is basically understand how does this bacteria and how disease um a microbiome how does the microbiome kind of affect our physiology um as a whole so i was able to knock down vitamin b6 and see how that affects the host um, and I was able to do various um, phenomic screenings, so um, looking at how the relationship between hosts, the microbiome, nutrients, adding drugs, and how that has an effect on the phenotypes. So I was doing survival assays with the worms. I was doing um, health span assays and <clears throat> development assays with the worms. And we we're able to find some cool results, which is already in publication. Right now, we found out that vitamin B6 does have an important effect in host physiology. Um, and this is a reason why when a child is born with um, maybe the lack of an enzyme um, that is used to maybe produce um, some of these vitamins, it means that they're not able to live long. Um, so this is something that we're able to find out, which was a kind of a cool research for me to have um, during my master's. And then fast forward to 2018. So I took some time out um, to kind of figure out what area I wanted to go into. So I worked as a research assistant at Imperial College London, kind of still doing the same things, looking at the whole um, microbiome because I thought it was quite cool. Um, and it was kind of an upgrowing um, kind of phenomenon growing in the field of biochemistry. Um, so I worked in the host microcometabolism group and I also worked at New York University as a lab te technician, also teaching and um, a course known as a principal of biology course um, for one semester. And then in 2019, um, I got into Cambridge on the, um, at Downing College and also started a YouTube channel where I started sharing my journey um, through um, academia. Um, and then I went back to chemistry for one year and did um, a lot of synthesis, um, which was great. So my project actually in this um, um, here was actually kind of a cancer-based project. So what we're doing was we are trying to make a new compound um, and a, a natural amino acid to kind of stop the binding of um, a protein known as CK2, which is involved in apoptosis. Um, so as we know, in cancer, cells kind of proliferate over time and just keep growing. But what we want to do is kind of induce um, apoptosis, so cell death or cell program death. Um, this was not a really a great um, project because nothing worked. Um, but it was a very good experience because I was able to learn a lot of like um, you know, synthesis, do a lot of TLC, um, mass spec, NMR, um, which was great. Um, but now going into what I currently do. So my project right now is actually delving in and investigating the aggregation of a protein known as alpha synuclein, And this protein is actually involved in Parkinson's disease. Um, so an overview into my project, um, so obviously Parkinson's disease, if you don't know, is the second most common neurodegenerative disease after Alzheimer's disease, and it affects about 10 million people worldwide. And the kind of the um, characteristics of the disease is the muscle rigidity, or maybe tremors at rest, but you also have other deficits like cognitive deficits, cardiovascular problems, and so forth. And the kind of, so what happens um, in outside, um, Parkinson's disease is that the dopaminergic neurons, which produce dopamine in the brain, kind of um, die. And this leads to an accumulation of several proteins, but the most abundant protein within them is alpha nuclein. And this is what I'm kind of investigating. Um, so just a quick um, understanding of how this protein kind of aggregates in that clumps of Lewy bodies is that they start off as monomers and then go off to become oligomers and then protofibrils. So you just get more accumulation and then fibrils. But actually the toxic species, which is actually thought to be implicated in Parkinson's disease is actually thought to be the oligomeric species. But I kind of look at this phenomena using something called liquid-liquid phase separation, which is pretty cool, um, kind of understanding and seeing all these um, proteins. So these are actually alpha synuclein proteins, which we look at under the microscope and we see them kind of bud and come together over time. But yeah, that's pretty much it um, for an overview of my project. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>
think it's been really, really great. I think it was really impressive. Um, and I was really impressed by the students, yeah. the questions. So they are so bright, yes. incredibly smart. Um, yeah, underestimated them massively. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so tired now. Yeah, it was a good day. Yeah. And Yeah. Now they know a bit more about uh, Fiji. Literally, the Fiji lifestyle. But yeah, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this day in the life. Um, we're tired and we're out. See you in the next video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs>